Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to uh, National 5 Calculations Type 4. Uh, rate or speed of reaction is what we're looking at today. Uh, and how do you calculate a rate? And the answer is very easy in chemistry. The answer is that rate is calculated as the change in something, which doesn't sound very exact, divided by the change in time that it took for that to happen. Now I say something, the two common somethings are volume in chemistry and mass. If, for example, you were collecting the gas uh, produced during a reaction, just like this one, then you will start at zero, of course, because you don't have any gases uh, at the start, and you end up making gas and it flattens off. There is another one. Uh, you can actually take, you can take a balance, an accurate balance, you could plonk your mixture on top of the accurate balance. Uh, and let's say it weighs, I don't know, say 76.42 grams at the start. And you've got something here giving off a gas. Believe it or not, gas weighs a surprising amount. We just don't notice it. Uh, and that number there will start to tick down. It will tick down to 41 and then 40 and then 39. So you can also have a change in mass divided by change in time. The graph looks seriously different to this, of course. If you want to pause the video and challenge yourself, you could maybe work out what that graph would look like. I'm going to sketch it just over here, where we have mass against time. If you have a think about that, it will start high, and it will actually fall off over time and go there. It won't go down to zero, because you'll still have the weight of your beaker. Nevertheless, either of these two graphs, or just even straightforward numbers, can be used to calculate rate. If you know the change in your something that you're measuring divided by how long it took for that to happen. This is one of the interesting cases where you do actually have to have a unit and I'll show you how to get that. The question says here, it says actually in the next part of the question, it says calculate the rate in the first 20 seconds of this reaction. So we're interested in the time period from zero, so it's the first 20, so zero to 20. That's our change in time, of course, so that's 20. What was the change in volume? Well, we started at zero volume, and when we hit 20 seconds, we're on 30 centimeters cubed. So uh, in our case, our change in volume changes from nothing to 30, so that's 30 on the top line. Um, and the bottom line is the change in time, that's nothing to 20. So 30 over 20 is 1.5. 1.5 what? This is the very, very rare case where you can't leave it as just a number. In fact, it actually doesn't... This, this. I'm not answering this question. My apologies. The question's on the next page, but it refers to this graph. And the question actually says, including units. Now, the units... The good news is the units are actually quite easy to work out because the top line here is 30 watts, and the answer is, is 30 centimetres cubed? So that is centimetres cubed, and this is 20 watt, and the answer is 20 seconds. So it's actually centimetres cubed per second. If you know your maths, that negative one actually means it belongs on the bottom line. An alternative way of doing this would be cm cubed slash seconds. Sorry, I was off the page there, getting sloppy again. Important to note that these two are the same thing mathematically. This, however, I'm about to show you is wrong. Cm cubed slash seconds to the minus one. You can't combine the two. It's an either or situation, not a both. So let's pay no attention to that. Um, and that's how you calculate rate, folks. So it's the change in a quantity that you're measuring divided by the time that it took for that change to happen. Um, just out of curiosity, what if we calculated the rate in the next 20 seconds? And it's not entirely possible. I've seen them ask you the question like that. Calculate the rate for the period between 20 to 40 seconds. So that is now our period of time. Still 20 seconds. Let's have a look at the change in volume. So we start here at 20 and we end up here. So in red, we have our second rate. So it's the change in volume changes from 30 up to 50. So now that is um, 30 to 50. That's the top line. 
the bottom line is 20 to 40. If you're going to be really pedantic, by the way, as technically speaking, change in means the second number take away the first number. So feel free to shout at me if you're another teacher I know. You know what I mean? It's the difference between these two and the difference between these two. So that's actually 20 over 20 now, which comes out to be one centimeter cubed per second. Am I still on camera? Yes, I am. See that? The rate's slowing down. No, no, sorry, this is hey, it's okay, I'm talking to the camera, but thank you for your contribution, it's always appreciated. <laughs> My wife is just talking about the rate of the internet there. Um, <laughs> rates everywhere today. Uh, let's look at the rate for the next 20 seconds, just for kicks, because we can. Um, so let's have a look at the rate between 40 to 60. I wonder if it continues the trend of slowing down. So we're going from f here to here now. So that's from 50 up to 60. So the third rate calculation, so rate number three is a 50 to 60. The top line is now 10. The bottom line is still 20 now. So now we're down to a rate of 0 0.5 centimeters cubed per second. And as you can see, the rate is progressively getting slower. And that, of course, is exactly why the graph is this shape, because sooner or later, the rate at this point here is now zero. And the experiment has finished. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.